All right, it's good to be back with you again. Uh, today we're going to talk about gridlock. We're going to talk about what is gridlock, how do couples get into gridlock, and maybe even the most important question, how do couples get themselves out of gridlock? So that'll be our topic today. So when we talk about gridlock, uh, let's think about this for a minute, this concept of two individuals being stuck in a position contrary to one another. It's probably one of the best defi definitions for that idea of gridlock in a marriage or in a relationship, right? So two individuals, they're stuck in a position contrary to one another. So they're not in the same place as each other on a, on a particular topic. They're contrary to each other. And they're stuck in those positions, both waiting on the other to make the change, right? So we call that gridlock. They're not, they're not coming together. They're not resolving this difference. They're kind of stuck in this position. And you can insert a variety of topics that couples get uh, stuck in gridlock on. They can be in gridlock on intimacy issues in their relationship, kind of intimacy differences between the two of them, uh, one longing for more emotional intimacy or physical intimacy than the other. They can get stuck on financial, uh, in financial gridlock, differences in the way that they see financial decision-making, the way that they spend their money, the way that they save their money. Uh, gridlock can happen around parenting differences. So a particular issue with a, with a child, a principle in the way in which we want to parent, provide rewards or consequences, we can be stuck in gridlock. We can be stuck in gridlock around the in-laws, <laughs> how much we ought to let extended family into our relationship versus keeping extended family outside of the relationship. We can be stuck in communication gridlock, so both trying to make a point in, in, uh, in the relationship, trying to communicate their side of an issue and uh, never really being able to come together on that issue. So there's a variety of, a variety of topics, right? And about uh, the, the, the opportunities for gridlock are about as endless as uh, differences can be for two different people. And anytime you're trying to bring the lives of two people together, there's going to be the potential for gridlock, right? We, we have two unique individuals, which means there's going to be some differences, no matter how compatible the, per the, the couple is, there's gonna be some differences in their preferences and in their opinions and in their desires and in their needs. And those differences don't have to be uh, a, a game changer or, or a, they, don't have to, they don't have to turn into kind of an ultimatum um, in the relationship. They don't have to be a deal breaker, right? Those differences, if worked through well, can help grow both parties in ways that they wouldn't naturally grow if they didn't have the pressures of accommodating another person's needs. So in many ways, our differences in a relationship can not only help us grow and adapt and evolve as individuals, but can also help our relationship become stronger as we learn to appreciate those differences, understand those differences, and even work through those differences in a way that we draw closer together, right? So let's talk about that a little bit, how a couple gets into gridlock, right? So the way in which a couple kind of arrives at this gridlock place is there's, there's a difference that's significant enough for them, right? So they see it differently enough or they feel it differently enough that they find themselves with quite a gap or a void between where they both stand, right? So she's standing here and he's standing here and they have a difficult time being on the same page with whatever this thing is. And like I mentioned just a minute ago, the possibilities are endless for what that topic may be the difference that they're experiencing around this issue, right? So, so what might happen then, let me use a classic example. Let's say intimacy, an intimacy difference, and this couple is in gridlock. How did they get there, right? Well, let's say that she's in a place where she desires more emotional intimacy in the relationship, right? So she's not feeling the level of connection and attachment and fulfillment that she's wanting, that she's desiring. They don't communicate as often as she would like to in the relationship. And she doesn't really feel like that she understands her spouse on as deep of a level as she would like to. Uh, nor does, does she feel like he's really showing the interest that she would feel uh, comfortable with, loved by, in her needs and in her thoughts and in her desires, right? 
So there's kind of this emotional gap between them and she's standing in position for wanting more emotional intimacy, right? So she's taken this stance in the relationship where she's requesting and desiring a greater level of emotional intimacy. The husband, on the other hand, in this case, in this pretend kind of made up case, uh, desires more physical intimacy in the relationship. He remembers at the beginnings of the relationship where there was no more passion, more connection when it came to physicality. She seemed more interested in cuddling and holding hands and hugging, right? Her eyes seemed to light up when he would come into the room, right? She would, she would even create situations for them to have uh, some, some fun and interactive and explorative kind of sexual experiences with each other. She was proactive in that effort. And he misses that, he longs for that, right? He longs for feeling more connected, intimately connected in a physical way in the relationship. And he's standing for that desire. He's standing in position uh, for that need, that hope, that desire to be more connected to his spouse, right? And in many ways, their desire is the same. They both wanna be heard. They both wanna be understood. They both wanna be valued. They both want their priority their preference to be a priority, right? They, they both have desire for greater connection. In all these ways, they're exactly the same, right? What's motivating where they're standing is very, very similar, even though their stance with one another is in quite a different place. She's standing more for emotional, he's standing more for physical, right? So their stance is in a different place, but the desire driving that stance is the same. And many times couples miss that, right? And it's part of the solution for getting out of gridlock. Many times couples miss this idea that what's driving where they're standing is very similar for their partner, both wanting to be heard, both wanting to be understood, both wanting to be accommodated, right? And in this case, both loving each other, longing for each other greatly, both desiring a stronger connection, both interested in feeling more love, but the manner in which, the avenue in which they want these things is different. She wants it more emotionally, he wants it more physically, right? So, so the danger for a couple, sometimes the reason that they don't get out of this gridlock place is he feels like if he accommodates more of the emotional intimacy in the relationship, right? So if he kind of leaves where he's standing, standing for more physical desire in the relationship, if he leaves that place and he joins her in more emotional intimacy, sometimes he's concerned that he runs the risk of her feeling more connected emotionally and then feeling satisfied, which would be the goal emotionally, and then forgetting about his desire and his need for physical, right? Because she doesn't seem to need or desire it on the same level that he does. So he's nervous if he gives up ground, that she'll take that ground, she'll appreciate the efforts, but that appreciation will cause her to be even more likely uh, to be neglectful of his desire for the physical, right? So he's nervous to leave his stance because if I give up space in coming towards you, I might meet your need, but you may be even less focused on my need, that you might not naturally gravitate this way as I gravitate this way, right? That I might come to you and try to meet that need and mine will still go unmet and you'll even be less, uh, less accommodating of that need because in your experience as my wife, you're gonna feel more fulfilled in our relationship, right? So he can be afraid of that and therefore not put his energy into meeting her need. Well, that can go both ways, right? She can be fearful the same that if I just start to focus on and accommodate a bit more physical connection, a bit more physical interest, right? If I initiate a bit more physical love in our relationship, right? If I do that, if I put effort into that, then I'm gonna come your way. And if I come your way and you feel more satisfied in the relationship, you feel more connected in our love, you, you feel more fulfilled in our, in our physicality, that you'll be comfortable there, that you'll neglect the idea that I have needs too, right? That in your experience as my husband, you will say our relationship feels great. And the relationship feeling great, right? Like feeling good to you can then cause your neglect, your complacency at realizing that I have a need as well, right? So that I'll give up that ground. And instead of me giving up that ground and you coming and joining me in kind of a balanced place, 
I'll give up that ground and you'll take that ground and you'll neglect the need that I have for more emotional connection in our relationship, right? So you can really uh, kind of empathize with where these, this couple is. They're stuck in gridlock, not because they want to be stubbornly oppositional to each other, not because they desire defensiveness with one another, and certainly not because they hate each other. Although that's where we can take it emotionally sometimes. He can pretend to himself that the reason she's not putting more effort in is because he just doesn't matter to her enough to do it and vice versa. When in reality, we said at the beginning, right, they have more in common that way than they realize. They both actually greatly desire one another, right? They don't have the opposite issue of not caring. They actually care greatly. It's why they're in the position that they are, both wanting to feel that love and that connection just in different ways, right? So part of the solution there is then starts to become quite plain, right? That the, the gridlock exists because both are waiting on the other to be the change, right? He feels like that naturally he would be more emotionally invested if he felt physically connected. In fact, he would say internally, right? It's hard for me to show interest emotionally when I feel like I don't matter to you. And how do I know I don't matter to you? Because you're just not that into me, right? If you were into me the way that I'm into you, you would feel for me what I feel for you, which means you would be more proactive physically than you are. And because you're not more proactive physically, it must be because you're just not that into me, not as into me as I am into you because I do desire you, right? So that can be a painful process in a way that keeps him stuck. It's hard for him to show more emotional intimacy in the relationship, emotional interest, Right, create more time for emotional uh, and depth, uh, emotional conversation and depth. Right, it makes it hard for him to do that because he feels like he's investing in someone that doesn't really value him. Right, and the same for her. She can be stuck in that same gridlock, nervous to join him to give up ground. Right, because it feels as though it's hard to physically connect with somebody, to give myself to somebody physically, and to even be motivated and interested in that physical offering when I feel like I just don't matter that much to you. And why do I come to that conclusion? Because if you felt for me, husband, what I feel for you, you would be more emotionally interested. You would wanna talk with me. You would want to understand my mind. You'd be interested in what was going on in my day. And why do I know that? Because that's what I feel for you, right? Because I love you and I'm emotionally uh, uh, attuned, right? That's what I want. That's what I'll feel fulfilled by. And if you were as into me as I am into you, you would be more emotionally pursuing me. And because you're not, it makes me think that you don't care and that you don't value me, right? So you can see how they get stuck in this gridlock, both waiting on the other to join them. Her feeling like if he could just be more emotionally invested, it would be much easier for her to be physically connected. And she's right, that's true, right? The problem is the same thing exists the other way, right? He's standing in a place saying, if you could just be more physically connected to me, it would make it a lot easier for me to be emotionally invested and interested in you because I would feel like I'm connecting with somebody, right? Emotionally connecting with somebody that cares deeply for me and that I care for. So you can see how they get kind of stuck in this gridlock place, both waiting on the other to be the change and both seeing their contribution to the problem, her being physically neg neglectful, him being emotionally neglectful, both seeing their, their contribution to the problem as just a natural and basic consequence of their partner's stance, right? She's saying, of course I would like to be physically connected with my husband, but how am I supposed to do that when you're not emotionally invested in me, right? And then he would say the same, of course I'm not more emotionally sensitive to my wife, but how am I supposed to do that when she's, she doesn't even like me? She's not even into me, right? So, so they both see their contribution to the problem, but they see it as a natural consequence to the other person's contribution to the problem. And they both mistakenly see it as theirs would naturally be resolved if the other would resolve theirs, right? He would naturally feel more emotional investment if she would be more physically connected. Right? So he sees the solution to his contribution being his wife. 
and she sees the solution to her negative contribution to being her husband, right? Both waiting on the other to be the change. Well, folks, that's not how relationships get better. <laughs> relationships get better by individuals starting to uncover and identify what is their contribution to the gridlock that they're stuck in, right? In order for a couple to get better, both need to have a good understanding of what is their contribution to the gridlock that they're stuck in. Why? Because they're the only ones who can make that change occur, right? If we're both waiting on the other to be the change, guess what happens? Nobody change, right? Nobody changes. And as nobody changes, the relationship stays the same, right? But it doesn't stay the same. It gets harder over time. We get more and more set in defense of those things that we need in the relationship because we have less and less hope that our spouse is going to get it, right? So we start to drift further and further over time from each other, stuck in this gridlock. It doesn't stay stagnant. It gets worse, right? As time goes by and as those sensitivities increase, right? So the only way that this gets better is both having a good understanding of what is their part of the contribution to the gridlock that they're stuck in. And in this case, his part of that contribution is between where he is and the middle point between them because we want them to meet like this, not like this, not like this, right? We want them to meet like this, right? Finding that, that middle place where they're both stretching and compromising in order to meet each other's needs in, in, a, in a fulfilling kind of win-win way, right? The only way they do that is he's got to understand that there's a gap of emotional investment that's his responsibility to close if he wants to be more connected to his wife. And that she needs to understand there's a gap of physical connection that she needs to work to close if she wants more connection with her husband, right? That's her part of the relational contribution, just like his. And if a couple can take a 50-50 mentality, that's what I like to call it a 50-50 mentality, right? The idea that in any problem that we have, I probably own about 50% of it and my spouse owns the other. And instead of waiting on my spouse to be the change, and then I'll change naturally, I need to be willing to be the change too. We both need to listen to each other to find enough understanding in order to accommodate each other's needs that we can meet when we have a gap like this in intimacy, for example, that we can meet by her being a little bit more physically interested and invested and him being more emotionally uh, interested and invested, right? That as they do that, they close this gap. They draw closer to each other, both focused on the needs of the other and the parts that they may be neglecting in that gridlock, right? So that 50-50 mentality is extremely important in closing that gap. And the only way they're going to understand what their partner's needs are is by listening for understanding, right? Doing a great job listening in the relationship to understand what that is that their partner needs and being willing to offer that as my partner's willing to offer both of us moving together in rhythm in a balanced way, right? Versus requiring my partner to join me long enough that I'm convinced they're gonna stay there and then we'll take a look at your needs. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's way too many partners, way too many couples that are stuck in that gridlock and they don't just stay stagnant. It grows worse over time with hurt feelings, right? So what is gridlock? Gridlock is both waiting on the other to be the change when we find ourselves at an impasse that we have a difference in our relationship. How do couples get into it? Well, they get into it because they're representing their part in the relationship that they feel like their partner's not paying attention to. And they're nervous to give up that ground, worried that if they do, they'll just make their partner's experience better, but that'll make their partner even more likely to be complacent with their needs, right? So that's how they end up there how they end up stuck there, and what's the solution to get out of it? Both need to be willing to listen to one another's needs for understanding, and then being willing to take a 50-50 mentality that says, I'm 50% of this issue. And if I want my partner to be willing to accommodate and make changes, which I desperately do, I need to be willing to make those changes as well, which means I need to learn their need better and I need to be willing to invest in it with the faith and the confidence that they're gonna do the same with me. That way, as I focus on my part and they focus on their part, we close the gap with one another 
in a really balanced way in a way that we both can fulfill, uh, can experience great levels of fulfillment and connection over time without either partner having to sacrifice their desires and their needs solely to meet the needs of their partner, right? That's how we get out of it. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about these principles, we talk about this in our Resolving Differences video course. We also have a video course out that's called Advanced Communication Strategies, and then one of uh, the Maintaining Intimacy and Sex, the part one. So all three of those video courses talk about different aspects of this gridlock and how a couple might be able to move through that gridlock in order to escape kind of this issue that they're stuck in, whatever the topic may be. If you find yourself in a gridlock, you're not alone. This is a common issue for almost every couple that exists. In fact, I would dare say every couple has found themselves in a gridlock before. So don't panic. Don't feel like that your relationship somehow uh, is destined for failure if you're stuck in one of these, right? Apply the principles that we've talked about today. If we can be of help to you, reach out to us, comment below. We're happy to talk, chat with you in the comments, right? Or you can reach out, work with one of our professionals who can kind of mediate and help negotiate uh, your way through this uh, difference. So, so, so don't feel stuck and don't feel like your relationship is a failure, right? Uh, there's, there's hope, there's great hope, and, uh, and we're here to help that process occur. So, so I hope that's been helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope that your relationship continues to improve in a more connected, more vulnerable way. If you haven't yet, like us, subscribe, turn on, uh, turn on the bell, right? Uh, we would love for you to get all the, the materials that we're putting out. Our goal is to change relationships, heal relationships, strengthen relationships everywhere. And we want to be a benefit to you too. So stay tuned, take a look at all of our content, and we really appreciate your support in following our channel. Have a great day.